For this week's adventure, we are in Northern Ontario at Esnagami Wilderness Lodge. We will be targeting giant northern pike, walleye, and trophy brook trout. We are excited to be here and it's going to be a great episode. We go. Oh, that was a big fish. It looked big. Oh, almost. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Yes. In the net. Oh my God, was that crazy. Here we go, fish You're on. on. Wow, dead drifting a bomber. Oh Mikey, my God. what a stud. Oh That's my what God. we're talking about there. That's the Gammy <sighs> Brook Trout. I'm speechless. I'm literally speechless. On a bomber. A bomber. Absolutely fantastic. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. What if I was to tell you about a place in the far north, a place where shorelines run hundreds of miles as you look out the plane window in awe, with more islands than you could count. A place where majestic eagles soar high above, where wildlife is abundant and time has stood still. What if I was to tell you that this same place is home to massive trophy northern pike, that walleye are stacked by the numbers throughout the entire lake, that this same place also holds trophy brook trout eager to take a fly on the surface. This place does exist. Three words. Esnagami Wilderness Lodge. No better way to get introduced to Lake Esnagami Northern Pike than to start our trip with a guided day out in the back bays of the lake. Sight fishing massive pike in the shallows. Little cloudier conditions today, overcast. Not seeing them as well, so we're gonna be just kind of cruising along real slowly throughout the bay like this. It's about two, three foot on average. We're kind of looking for a bit of structure, like we got a reed patch up here in head. We can kind of cruise along the side to it. If you see, as we're going along here, if you see a dust cloud kind of go off one side of the boat, try to figure out what direction that fish is moving in and try to cut it off and let your fly just kind of sink down right in front of it. Fish it right to the boat, Ethan? Yep, keep it right up tight. Sometimes you'll get a follow and they won't hit it right away. So this is ever beautiful up here. Yeah. Try uh, turn the boat a little bit here. See if you can cast one up to this far edge of the reeds there, out into the open, bring it up through. Yeah, so when you're retrieving it, you kind of just want to slow your retrieve down a little bit, kind of give the fly a little bit of time to sink and just pop it when you strip it. So you kind of strip down and let the rod move a little bit. There you go. Give I it guess. some time in between. Give it a bit of a pause, let it hang there in front of them. And that's usually when they'll take it, is when it's just sitting there. So you're just bringing it up, letting it drop? Yeah, exactly. Just kind of popping your way through there. Keep fanning your way across that edge of the reeds there. And 
we'll work these last few casts through here and we'll kind of keep slipping up through there. So Ethan has me just slowly twitching it, letting the fly come up, give it a twitch, we're letting it go down, pausing, and we're presenting it really slow here. We're in super shallow water. We've already had two blow ups on this. He has us fishing right in the reeds. This looks super pikey in here. There we are. There you go. There we go. Nice. Get that tension on there, on the rod. Good. There we go. Good, good. Ethan brought us back into this little bay here. It's nice and calm. And we're still fishing in shallow water. This guy is dialed in on pike. I am listening to everything he tells me to do. Ready, my friend? Yep. Get that back in the water real quick here. Should kick off nice and strong. There you, there you go. go. There we go. There you go. Keep that line tight. That's it. Oh, oh, oh hello. Oh, oh. We're on. We are on. It's we are on. And now. Wow, does that come quick. That's about as fun as it gets for me. I'm telling you. Sight fish and pike. Man, oh man. That was so epic. Watching him take that. This guy came at this thing at a 30 miles an hour. Unreal. Thanks, Ethan. Good job, bud. That was a lot of fun. Let me tell you that. There you are. Nice one. That's a nicer one, yeah? Yeah. Touching 30. Yeah, we're getting there up go. there. We're climbing the charts. 30 inch here. Nice. Yeah, we're climbing the charts. Beautiful. So just kind of as we're making our way in here, there's a nice deeper trough on the left side of this bay. Bit of weed section through, running up through there, and we've seen some nice schools of yellow perch swimming around. We can see here and there, there's some nice big fish chasing them around. We're going to kind of try to target them as we move up towards them. We'll be sight fishing mostly. So when you see a fish moving on the run, you're gonna to wanna to hit in front of it. And let that fly get down in front of it before you start your retrieve. Ethan just brought us into a back bay and we're literally on a casting platform as if we're in Bahamas fishing for barracuda. We are seeing every take, we're fishing in two feet of water. Absolutely amazing. So good, thank you, Ethan. We had a fantastic taste of what this lake has to offer. I can't wait for it tomorrow. That's about as fun as it gets for me. Sight fish and pike, that was a lot of fun. Let me tell you that. So guides for us are very important, uh, mostly for the fact that we're on a, a large body of water. Uh, the lake is 18,000 acres. It has 120 miles of shoreline and a couple of hundred islands. At least 150 look exactly the same. So for first time guests anyway, it's, it's very handy to have a, a guide out for the uh, first day or two. Probably the common ground that uh, links them all together is their passion. And uh, so we definitely look for, uh, for staff that has a passion for the outdoors and uh, we have uh, you know, several guides here that have uh, kind of worked up through the years and, and pass on their knowledge to the next group coming in. Uh, so uh, hopefully a good, a good group of kids that uh, like what they're doing and take good care of our guests out there. Today we decided to mix it up a bit. Of course we will continue pike fishing, but we will also have a try at some of the walleye that this area is known for. Build up an appetite out on the water, then head out on the lake to an island to mingle with the other guests. 
it's a shore lunch kind of day. There we go. Kyle took us out right to the mouth of this little bay and he put a full sink tip rod in my hand and we're down and we're absolutely pounding walleye. I'm telling you, fishing walleye one after another like that, absolutely amazing. Yeah, so we're gonna go back into the bay here. Uh, the pike should be coming up and starting sunning now, now that the sun's up high. They kind of stage out in this deeper trough here with the walleyes and there's a river mouth out here. And then they come back in this bay uh, to sun and there's a lot of bait fish in there right now that we're gonna be, uh, they're gonna help hold those pike here. So we're gonna see if we can get on some uh, bigger pike to start the morning with. We have Kyle Reed guiding us out here today. And this kid, I taught how to cast when he was just a little boy. I come up to Esnagami, he's two feet taller and he's out guiding us today and I think that's what makes this sport absolutely amazing. To see the young kids take charge and having one of my former students guiding me is going to be a special day. He's taking us into a back bay and we're going to try to pound huge pike in shallow water. We're going to try to sight them and so far we are having so much fun. I love fishing back bays for big pike. Sight fishing them is something I rarely get to do and it's absolutely spectacular seeing the takes. I'm hooked on pike fishing in the shallows. There should be pike out here too. Like there we you... go. Oh, that was a big fish. It looked big. Oh, this guy came out of nowhere. I think this is a bigger fish. I can't tell though. He came out of nowhere, this guy. And we got, of course, we got on the smallest fly. Yeah. Oh, we are in for a street fight, boys. We are in big for it. Pike. We're big, in big for pike. it. We are in for one. It's a very big pike. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to. Oh no. I'll try to control the boat for you. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is an old-fashioned street fight. Woo Bring that head over it. Oh, oh. almost. <laughs> oh, baby. Woo! Yes! In the net. Woo! Yes, Kyle. Yes. <laughs> yes, buddy. That is a gator. Oh my God, was that crazy. That is a gator. Pike are in transition. That means I'm taking two rods at all time. One of them, large arbor, full sink tip. We're using this to fish the pike in the four to six feet of water, and we're trying to pull them up. And then we could literally go around the corner, we're into two feet of water, and I break out this one here. It has a floating line on it, and we're fishing in two feet of water with this. So we're literally switching back and forth with rods, especially when we see a pike. We're grabbing this one, and we're throwing it right at them. We go into the depths, we're pulling out the full sink tip. Two musts you must have every time you're fishing big pike. First and foremost, jaw spreader. Second, long nose pliers. These will get the jaw open. The teeth will be away from your hands. Get the pliers in, barbless hooks, turn it quickly, get the hook out, 
and then we're getting the pike right back into the water. Everyone's happy, the pike's safe, and everyone's fingers are not getting cut. Jaw spreaders, your best friend pike fishing. American Plan Lodge, we offer full service plans here. All your meals are included, you know, cabins are nice log cabins, all uh, equipped with everything you need. So it really is set up to allow the uh, guest and visitor to come without bringing a whole bunch of stuff with them. So we can accommodate around 25 to 30 guests here. Uh, we've got nine cabins all together. Uh, a couple of them will handle a group of six, and then there's uh, three, four that'll handle a group of four, and then there's uh, a few uh, two-person cabins. You know, the whole experience really is flying in, you know, seeing uh, Northern Ontario, you know, an unspoiled area, uh, coming into the lodge and enjoying the, uh, you know, the hospitality here and the meals and that. And then on the water, uh, aside from the fish, there's, we have lots of wildlife up here. Moose, bear, uh, we have a lot of woodland caribou in the area, which is quite unique. Uh, we see wolves as, as well and uh, you know pick a pick a bird loon uh, all kinds of different uh, hawks and eagles osprey uh, so for those that uh, like to take pictures and are, are photographers it, it's an awesome there's a picture around every corner and you, you get a chance of coming across wildlife uh, on occasion so that's uh, that's definitely a, a nice part of it as well so 33 years is quite a while to be at the helm of, of a lodge but i think ultimately i mean i've I'm a hardcore, avid, passionate fisherman, and I've thought many times, what is it really about this whole thing that, you know, makes my motor run and my motor tick? And uh, I mean, we do, you know, it's a lifestyle for us. I think ultimately what it is, is the sharing of the experience. And uh, whether uh, you're guiding or you're out with friends or, even if you're not catching the big fish to see somebody or put someone on the fish of a lifetime, it's, it's absolutely super rewarding. And uh, you know, it's such a great atmosphere to be in. Guests are on vacation and it's very casual and you know, everyone kind of has the same like-mindedness here. So that's, I think that's what it is ultimately, just, just sharing the experience, being outdoor in a beautiful place and uh, catching a couple of fish once in a while. If you're thinking about a flying trip to the north, I think that uh, you know we can definitely offer pretty much everything you're looking for. We definitely care, uh, depending on what you're looking for, we offer fly fishing, you take care of your travel arrangements, and, and really 
put together a very comprehensive package. You're going to get away from it all, unwind, disengage, catch some fish and uh, recharge your batteries in the great northern Ontario Algoma wilderness, I guess. So that, uh, that gets me coming back every year. We decided to take a short tour of the trout ponds known as Wonderland. The scenery is spectacular and it's only a quick five minute boat ride from the lodge. The lodge offers day excursions for eager anglers trying to get the better of an elusive brook trout. This was truly a fantastic experience as the scenery outlived the expectations. Today was leisure, but tomorrow we are going on an adventure. Today, we are going to switch gears and go across the lake to the Esnagami River on the hunt for wild brook trout. The day excursion is all about having a fun mini adventure. It's half adventure and scenic tour and half fishing and all fun. And these northern flowages have brook trout in them and they, they can be very, very big as well. We get fish from anywhere from a pound to four, five, six pounds of some of our top end and fish here. And it's a super special part of this trip along with pike and walleye. Come up here and fish in a, in a big river, hook into two to four, six pound brookies is sweet for sure. We love, I love getting guests up that understand what this fish of a lifetime is, is all about. And uh, we offer day trips down the river, overnight trips. We have a couple outpost camps as well. Uh, so that option is there. Also with the outpost camps, we do have groups that like to uh, go down and do their own thing. And uh, they'll fly down for a few days or a week and fish walleye pike and you know do some rookie fishing all in, in more of a rustic uh, atmosphere down there. Yesterday, we went on a mini adventure with Eric looking for brook trout. Today, we're going full bore. We're going out for the full day. Today, it's opening day on the sanctuary, so the full river is open. It's early in the morning. We just came about 30 minute drive by boat right across the lake, back into this beautiful little river that winds down, and now we're starting to get into the fast stuff. And today, it looks like we're gonna be putting streamers through some of the faster water, and we're gonna work our way downstream. From what we're seeing already, we're starting to see some bugs in the air, so there's a possibility we might be seeing some fish up top, and uh, we're looking forward to go fishing this stretch of river. As we make our way down the river here today, it's likely that we're gonna run into a variety of different hatches. We're gonna see some dragonflies, We'll see lots of caddis, stoneflies. The water's a bit different. As we make our way down, we'll hit faster pools, slower pools. We're gonna kind of vary it up a little bit, run some streamers, we'll do some nymphing, go on top even for some dry fly action. We have a pretty good possibility of running into a few fish today. So just for this hole here, we're gonna kind of focus. We'll start in tight to us. It's a bit of a drop down kind of a pool, real shallow right in front of us. And then it kind of drops down eight, 10, 12 feet towards the back of it. So we'll start in tight, roll your fly down real close. And then with your successive cast, we'll stretch back further in the pool there. And we'll start to hit further out. There's a nice boulder actually about halfway up there in that flat water right in between yeah. the seams there. There's a really nice boulder right in the middle of it. Oftentimes they'll sit in front of that actually. So you want us working inside, slowly working our way out? Exactly, 
Exactly. Fish. Ooh. Oh, this is unreal. Absolutely unreal. Up and around that rock there. Nice brookie. Woo! Oh awesome. my God. Oh my God. All right. On the board, first fish of the day. This is what we're looking for. Beautiful Espagami brook trout, right in around 15, 16 inches. Nice fish, Mikey. This is something else. That's the biggest brook trout I've ever seen in my hand. Unreal. Is there a trout that's prettier than these things? They're absolutely gorgeous. When they said this was gonna be a river adventure, they weren't kidding. This is the third boat we've been on today. So we're fishing for big stretches of the river. Then we get to these big sets of rapids. We just do an easy little stroll and then they just take you right along in. It's a little two minute walk. You have another boat. So now we're in a canoe. This is the third boat of the day and it's working out perfectly. It's, it's a really comfortable way to fish. The setup here is perfect. There's a fish. Hello. Oh, get that on the reel. Don't worry about that reel. Don't worry about that reel. That's a nice, that's a nice effect. So we saw a big fish rising right out in front of Ethan. He was throwing a dry. He suggested I try putting a streamer through exactly where he was. There he is. And a whammo. Awesome. Beauty fish, What a Mikey. gorgeous fish. Look at this. Wow. What a treat this is. Hook popped right out. That's the beauty of a barbless fly right there. There we go, Mikey. Nice wow. one. The last fish I hit was simply using a green crystal flash woolly bugger, casting it into the seam, letting it drop into the soft water, and we're twitching it in, hitting fish. We're gonna continue to work this pool and hopefully hit more out of it. We're getting dragonfly hatches here. So we're fishing a crystal woolly bugger, crystal flash, and we're working the seams one by one. Inside, 15 feet, we're drifting it right into the fast part of the seam and letting it drop into the soft water, and then I'm slowly dragging it and it looks like an emerging nymph coming up, a dragonfly nymph coming out of the water to emerge. And that's where they're hitting the fish. So we're casting right into the seam. We're just throwing a little mend in and we're letting it drop right across into the soft water. And then we're letting the fly get down and we're crawling it up. And every time you crawl it, the fly comes up and it looks like a nymph is gonna come up and emerge. We have a massive dragonfly hatch happening right now and the fishing's just starting to pick up now. So we're gonna continue just focusing on these seams and we're gonna pick them off one at a time. There's a fish. There we go. Right nice. under the tree. Awesome. Right under the tree. This is quite a wake. Sounds Steer him out of that. Uh, oh, from the lumber. Right there. Yep. I want you to control my rod too. If you see that fish coming up, I want yep, you to keep do him, this. just keep him as far away from that right bank as possible. He's going to want to go up in that tree there. Yeah, there he goes now. Oh awesome. yeah. There we go. Oh yeah. Another beautiful. Oh my god. Pop right out. Barbless. Nice. Look at that fish there. That's perfect. Oop. <laughs> what a day. What an absolute day. Let's get this beautiful fish back in the water.
we thought we would end this trip with a treat as we arranged for a fly-in excursion for brook trout. Here's hoping we could find some bigger trout on the surface. Our guide Ethan has let me know that we're getting into prime surface water today. Just a quick scenic flight with door-to-door -door service to the cozy outpost on the river. Time to wait her up and start our journey downstream. I'm super excited. We're back on the water. Ethan has taken me down into the dry fly section and we are throwing big bombers for wild brook trout. And these fish are big. It's hard to explain the feeling you get when a big fish explodes on the surface on your fly. A feeling I don't think I'll ever get tired of. I've dreamt of taking trophy brook trout on the surface for many years, and the experience lived up to the expectation. The stars lined up for us, and we had the time of our lives. Here we go, fish You're on. on. Wow. Let's go. Dead drifting a bomber. Unreal. Nicely done. This is absolutely amazing. Oh, this is, my knees are fish. shaking right now. <laughs> a bomber for brook trout, wow. He came up and smoked it. Holy cow, he's dogging. Wow. Rod down? Rod down. Keep him turned. Yeah, that's it. He's going to go for that timber on the bottom. There you go. Keep turning him. In right the in the net. Look oh. at this beautiful buck. My God. Oh, Mikey, my God. What a stud. Oh, that's my God. That's what we're talking about there. That's the Miami <sighs> Brook Trout. I'm speechless on a bomber. I'm in heaven. I have to get out of boat. I just want to have one moment with this thing up close and personal. I'm literally still shaking from that. That was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life. I threw it out the first time and I was skating it across. Ethan suggested I peel out some line and then dead drift it way into the back. And right on command, this fish came up and absolutely smoked this bomber. We're throwing big bombers. He took it, he went down. I hook set it and it was just dogging me. What an experience. I will never forget this. It is so amazing to do this. I wish everyone would try it at least once in their life. <laughs> He's gonna come back. Oh, there we go. There you go. Wow. Wow. Nice Unreal. Take. That was a Skating that take. boy. We were skating that one. Pulling it out of the seam and just skating it out creating a little V with that bomber and they're following it and they're just coming up from behind and swallowing it. It's incredible to watch. Watch that leader. Okay, ready? Nice. Woo! There's a net full of trout. What a beautiful fish, Mikey. Check out the colors on that gorgeous Asnagami brook trout. There we go. There you go on the strip retrieve. Nice. Just before I was gonna make my last cast, I started stripping in my line and this thing came out of nowhere and just smoked it from behind. I wasn't even ready for this one. In the net, it goes. There it goes. Woo. Wow, another nice thick fish. Another nice fish. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Called it! <laughs> I am a kid in a candy store. Oh my God. I wish everyone would just try this one time in their life. Oh, oh. buddy! Oh. <laughs> That's over 20. That's our 20. There we go! You're the man. You are Look the at man. that fish, Mikey. Check out the shoulders on this big old buck.
Oh, ho, 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 ho. Nice. Wow. I wasn't even ready for that one. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're on an absolutely beautiful trout run and the fish are sitting in the seams in the back and we're coaxing them off the seam by just casting it in and we're throwing a huge stack mend in, letting it go down and then we're just pulling it off the seam, creating a little V and the brook trout are coming out of the seams and following it and they're hitting it about two or three feet from the seam. So don't be afraid to throw big stack mends in when you're throwing huge bombers. You could get away with way much more than when you're, when you're throwing the little dainty flies. This one caught me totally off guard. I was literally gonna strip in to make my next cast and he must have came right out of the seam and decided he didn't want me to do that. It's a little hard landing upstream here, but I'm gonna try to get the head to you there. Nice, right Beautiful, in Ethan. Wow. Way to go. Wow. The skies opened and the downpour came, but it didn't matter. We were way beyond happy by this point. Wow, Mikey, look at that. You know, it's so cool seeing these tiny little fish in here with alongside those bigger ones. It's really an indicator of such a healthy fishery. We're getting those first year, second year fish. Thanks for watching. We had an incredible time up here at Esnagami Wilderness Lodge. We had the time of our life. We were fishing big pike, walleye, and of course, the huge brook trout. The wild fish are unreal. A very special thank you to Eric and Sue Lund for having us up here. We had a great time. I want to also send out a huge thank you to the staff and of course the guides. They're very hardworking and an amazing crew to work with. If you want to learn more about this episode or others in the series, feel free to give us a look. www.thenewflyfisher.com I'm your host Mikey Metcalf. I'll see you on the water. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,